that you keep your bearings. Let me contrast for a moment what religion has done by comparison. Turned God into a lawgiver. Turned the humanity of mum, the loving care, into Holy Spirit, even made him masculine, made her masculine. Don't you know that the male is not the female? Didn't you know that dad is not the nurturing? That mum is not a lawgiver? It is dad that handles law. And it's not the law of the household. The law of the household is mum's love, compassion, kindness, forgiveness. The law of dad, he's the one who deals with chaos and brings order, who goes out into a chaotic world, comes back able to make heaven, family, home, Yes, God is law. He's law against chaos, not against himself. His law brings freedom in his own home, that there be joy and peace and love and goodness, integrity, honesty, faithfulness, wisdom, understanding, all goodness, all blessing not the chaos of the world. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I pray not for the world, but for those whom thou hast given me, Father, out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have received thy word guidance of the Holy Spirit of Mum, Virgin Mary, Wisdom, Sophia, Sophia, her name's Sophia. I tell you your Holy Mum's name, Divine Mother's name, it's Sophia, and she's female, not male, for goodness sake. Know what religion has done. It's been a case of the world handling the holy, mauling it into some frightening apparition of condemnation, judgment, terror, fearsome power, thundering God from the mountains. But I had fainted had I not believed to have seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. And I chose to believe. I choose to believe in the goodness of God. And the harvest I reap is life eternal. That's conversion. The world can keep its proof. Its proof is a fantasy. Its proof is valid and true until proved otherwise. And then they scrap around for another explanation and another and another and another. And so it goes on. And this they call enlightenment. How absurd. How absurd. Child of the chaos. in the delusion of enlightenment. The fool says in his heart, there's no God. For as there's no God, there's no fool either. There's nothing. 
God is the personification of creativity, blessing, life eternal. If you say in your heart there's no God, you've no heart. You wait for life. You can do nothing else. And if you have any consciousness at all, you find the waiting intolerable and you cry out for God to exist. I wish to believe in you, Father. I wish to believe. I wish to be thankful for the ability to believe in you. You must exist, for there's no way I'd be able to imagine you as such, except I exist. Hasn't Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. If I am, I exist. Gratitude floods into me, Lord. I call you Lord. I don't even know what it means, but I call you Lord. You're my dad. You're the cause of my being. Whatever that cause is, my devotion is of course to you, else otherwise I would not be existing. But I do exist. I'm thinking of you. Wow. I'm on my way. I can dream of how wonderful you may be. Love you, Dad. Do you see? You're a follower. You're converted. You've seen the light. <laughs> You're born again, not just of this world now, the chaos, but of God. His loving kindness, life eternal. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, life eternal. Thank you, Dad. Oh yes, religion says there is God, but it's made it a him, a monster. Fearful, thundering war god from the mountains, genocidal, judgmental, will condemn the whole planet except eight people if he so chooses will condemn some to the pit. Hasn't he made all? Do you mean these spirits he's made for damnation? That's what you've said. Do you know what you've said? He's made evil for suffering. Eternally. Have you no idea of the goodness and kindness of God? Know your God. This is life eternal to know him. But you have made him some frightening monster of judgment, blame, sacrifice, blood and gore a price that must be paid. Pay me that thou, that thou owest. You've turned God into Shylock. Come for his pound of flesh. Of course, because your God is of the flesh. He's of this world. How does it contain its criminals? By understanding them? No. Throws them in a, a dungeon, a prison. 
treats uh, breach of the law with condemnation. Your religion is of the world. You don't know God. Worse, you believe you do, and you keep everyone else from him with this illusion, this delusion, this evil fantasy of the dark, of the chaos. What do you expect from a world of good and evil, but a religion that's of good and evil too? What else could it give birth to? Chaos just gives birth to chaos. Without the integrity, consistency, creativity, etc., 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 of God. The fool says in his heart, There is no God, and the religious tell you the wrong God. Oh my goodness. Which is worse? Pope or pagan? They're both giants of despair. Have you read The Pilgrim's Progress? John Bunyan. <laughs> it was the most read book after the Bible in the world. It's very quaint. It's even better in Old English. It's all about Christian who flees the city of destruction, which of course is the world, and goes in such a search of the eternal city, which is of course the Jerusalem as, as heaven. And uh, he has a good friend. You can imagine what the good friend's name is. It's faithful, of course. <laughs> and Christian carries this heavy burden it's not the burden of the world. The burden he actually carries is the religious burden on his back. And it weighs him down. And thank God it falls off him at some point and tumbles down the hillside. <laughs> but read the story. You get a more accurate version than I can remember. And uh, if that's not really to your liking, read C.S. Lewis, Screwtape Letters. You'll understand your opposition rather better then. It's a delightful book. Incredible insight. In fact, it was part of what made Lewis's Christian, of course, critics, um, be very cautious and wary of C.S. Lewis. Um, he understood the devil too well. <laughs> but if you think of it, the most godly would, wouldn't they? They'd know the devil very well. Because God created the devil too. And my view is, he too will find salvation. But it does seem to be rather a long journey. And it's very easy for me to say this from the security of the kingdom of heaven. It's almost appalling to hear it if you're suffering in the world. So I say no more. And that is enough reflection upon evil to get your bearings. I suggest you rehear some of the thousands of recordings that um, I've put on YouTube. Bless you.